The Lord be with you. Good evening. Welcome to this service of worship and Holy Communion on the eve of Monday, Thursday, 2020. We welcome you here via Facebook Live or if you will be watching or are watching this, by the time you hear it is uploaded from the church website to YouTube. We ask and invite you to pass the word to others that maybe do not have Facebook, but can watch the service and participate between now and later this weekend. Again, for this service of Holy Communion, there will be instructions later in our worship together and using the order for Holy Communion tonight, which is found on our Facebook page and our website, and those on our newsletter, um, church-wide mailing list, you would have received a written copy of the order for Holy Communion by, by mail. There will be a brief homily or meditation, and from there we will go directly into the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Before our worship begins, we want to also remind you that tomorrow for Good Friday, April the 10th at noon, there will be a Good Friday message that has uh, previously been recorded, but for specifically tomorrow at noon via Facebook Live and then later on, uh, on YouTube and the church website. And again, that's 12 noon tomorrow. Easter Sunday will be, as we have done the last few weeks, 11 a.m. on Sunday morning. And we will celebrate, again, via Facebook Live and then YouTube and on our church website. We will celebrate, look forward to celebrating Easter with you. An announcement for our community is we have been, we have been uh, contacted uh, by uh, the Salvation Army that there is a FEMA delivery. It was supposed to actually, we think, be this later this part of this week, but it has been rescheduled for next week. We do not know the day or the time at this moment, that's as of six o'clock this uh, Thursday evening tonight. But you may go to the website, I'm not sure if it's a Facebook page, but the website for the Clearfield Salvation Army and uh, Captain Laurie, and there should be a message uh, recorded or written about the time, the rescheduled day and time for the FEMA truck that will be coming to the Salvation Army location here in Clearfield with food items and other, other things for folks to be able to take home. You do not need to pre-register or the like, so uh, just keep checking that website you do not, if you know somebody that does not have access to a computer, have them call the church. If you cannot get the information for them, have them call the church and we'll try to get the information as soon as we know. Let us, with a few moments of silent prayer, prepare our hearts to worship God. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us worship God. Hear these words from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. 
I sought the Lord, and he answered me, delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, the Lord, and be radiant, so your face will never have to blush with shame. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Come, O oh, children, listen to me, that I might teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy the good? Depart from evil then and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them all. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Amen. I invite us this night to hear the Word of God briefly as it has been recorded in the Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter, beginning, beginning with the tenth verse. Now as Jesus sat at dinner in the house, of many tax collectors and sinners, they came and were sitting with him and eating with his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well or think they are well have no need of a physician, only those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the presumed righteous, but sinners to healing and salvation. And the reading ended with the 13th verse of the ninth chapter, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So may we this night take this portion of God's word and use it for ourselves. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts, may all of these things, we pray, be acceptable in thy sight. And as we hear your word proclaimed, grant to us an open mind a willing heart and a ready spirit and a hungry attitude as well to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was still pastoring in Danville, Illinois, I was reading a newsletter, it was actually during the month of November prior to Thanksgiving in 2012, was reading the newsletter from the church in Arkansas that Katie and I had served prior to coming to Illinois. And the words were in a newsletter, the article was entitled, I Went to the Lord's Clinic. I did a little internet research and learned that the author's name is Dennis Garner and that there are actually several presentations of this poem in song and or slideshow. And so tonight, I'd like to offer that to us as our meditation and proclamation. And as I offer it, filtered through my own imagination and experience, I would like to entitle it, Instead, I Went to the Lord's Clinic. Instead, I will entitle it, I Came to the Lord's Table. I came to the Lord's Table because I was hungry and also needed my routine checkup. And yes, I confirmed 
with my Lord that I was indeed ill. So before I could eat for my health and receive at the table of the Lord, Jesus took first my blood pressure. He saw I was low in tenderness. And when he read my temperature, the thermometer registered 40 degrees at least of anxiety. He ran an electrocardiogram and found that I needed several, quote, love bypasses since my arteries were blocked with loneliness and could not provide for my empty heart. He then recommended orthopedics because I could, was not able to walk by my brother and sister's side and could not hug any of my friends due to distance and also since I had fractured myself when tripping with envy. He also found I was short-sighted since I could not see beyond the shortcomings of my dear brothers and sisters. When I complained about deafness, the diagnostic was that I had stopped listening to Jesus, stopped listening to his voice, talking to me on a daily basis. For all of that, Jesus gave me an additional free consultation thanks to his mercifulness. So my pledge is now, once I have partaken and received of the Lord's table, I can leave the Lord's spiritual clinic and only have to take the natural remedies that he prescribes through his words of truth. Every morning, beginning with tomorrow, be sure to drink a full glass of gratitude. When getting to work, either at home or in your workplace or wherever, take one spoonful of peace. It would help every hour for me to also take one pill of patience, one cup of brother and sisterhood, and then to wash all that down one glass of humility. And then in my home, I need to remember to take at least one dose of love and when getting to bed to take two caplets of clear conscience that I will not give in to sadness or desperation for what I have been going through today. God knows how I feel and how you feel. God knows exactly and with perfection what is being allowed to happen in our lives, yours and mine, at this precise moment and in the days ahead. God's purpose for us is simply perfect. He wants to show you and me things that only we can understand by living what we are living in this time and period and by being in the place that both you and I are in right now. So may God give us, for every storm, a rainbow. For every tear, match it with a smile. For every care, a promise. And a blessing for every trial. For every problem life sends our way, may we have a faithful friend to share. For every sigh, may God give us in return a song and an answer and an assurance that God is receiving and responding for each prayer. This is my wish for you as well as myself, all of us this night as we approach the table of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As you are in your homes and listening to these words for the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Use whatever element suits you best for the bread and then for the wine. It's in your home, so we're not going to tell you or dictate who can and cannot take communion in your households. But we do want to assure all that you are welcome at this table. Anyone who loves the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity and in truth, and that the Presbyterian Church permits all children to partake at the Lord's table with their parent or guardian's guidance and permission. So unto him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his own blood, to him be a king and has made us a kingdom of priests, serving God, our heavenly Father, to our Lord Jesus Christ, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I invite us to hear what gracious words our Savior Christ says unto all who truly turn to Him. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest unto your souls. I am the bread of life, saith the Lord, whoever comes to me will never hunger, whoever believes on me will never thirst, and whoever cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For blessed are all who hunger and thirst after righteousness. You shall be filled. And it is on this holiest of nights, and we're talking about compared with Christmas Eve and Good Friday and Ash Wednesday and the like, but on this holiest of nights that we remember that our Lord Jesus Christ instituted this sacrament. And as we set apart these elements of bread and the fruit of the vine, I invite you, as you are comfortable and are so led, to just lightly touch the elements you are using in your place of worship tonight so that they might be set apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery, as we may be in different locations, but the Holy Spirit is with us all. And through the Holy Spirit, it is our Lord Jesus Christ who is presiding at this holy meal. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in preparation to receive this spiritual food, and as the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, bless us as we now take these elements of bread and the fruit of the vine to be set apart from all common uses to this holy use and mystery. We claim again, Lord Jesus, your promise that whenever two or three are gathered in the Father's name, you are found in their midst. And we ask that you, O Christ, through the Holy Spirit, indeed preside at this sacrament you have instituted and commanded us to do in remembrance of you. And that as we partake of this spiritual food, what we do here on earth will be blessed by you and bring a joy to your face in heaven. Lord Jesus, in your saving name we pray. Amen. May we remember that this sacrament is a gift from Christ himself. He told his disciples shortly before his betrayal that he would not eat of this meal again until we are all gathered at table in his eternal kingdom. So we partake of these elements as Christ's gift and as Christ's promise. I invite us now to hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ as they are described for us in three of the four Gospels and in the 11th chapter of the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthian congregation. 
We are told the night in which Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. And when he had blessed and given thanks, he broke it. And you as worshipers may now break a portion of the bread you have. He took bread and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body broken, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I now invite all of us at this time to partake of the bread, symbolizing the broke, soon to be broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. It was in the same manner after he had supped that our Savior took the cup. And as he poured, he said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink you all of it, for as often as you eat the bread and you drink the cup, you will show forth the Lord's death until he comes again. It is now appropriate at this time in your homes or wherever you find yourself at worship to partake of the wine, symbolizing the shedding of our Lord's blood for us and for our forgiveness and salvation. Amen. Let us pray. 
Lord God, our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for feeding us at the table of your Son once again with this spiritual food. And for this greatest of gifts, through Christ, symbolized by the elements in this sacrament. We are thankful that he, your son, did not count equality with the Father as something to be grasped or selfishly held on to for himself and for only himself, but who instead came in the form of a servant not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. That on his cross he gave himself as the full and complete sacrifice for the sins of the world, including our own. May we in response on this holiest of nights resolve again to give ourselves and our lives in the spirit and attitude of Jesus Christ as holy and living sacrifices to you, living lives of love for one another and responses of thanksgiving in our relationship with Christ. Hear us now, O God, as in our own prayers, in our homes and places of worship this night, as we pray and intercede for the homes and families and persons in our church family and related to those in our church family who were gathered here in this time of worship and sacrament this night. We pray for our communities, our state, our nation, and the world affected in any way by the current pandemic. Hear our prayers for health and safety for all those who are serving, seeking to care for the ill, the troubled, the hurting, the lonely, including medical personnel, police, EMS personnel, firefighters, our military, and volunteers, clerks in our stores that need to be open, and for all, for all, O oh God, who are serving, either at work or vocation or volunteering. We ask around this table tonight prayers for those who feel they are unforgiven, for again the hurting and the despairing wherever they may be found. And we give thanksgiving again, O oh God, for your forgiveness in Christ for them and for ourselves. And Lord Jesus, for your presence and love and guidance in each of our lives that will enable us from this night forward to be your true and genuine disciples. Hear us now, O oh God, as we pray these and other intercessions as you listen in this time of silent prayer to our hearts and our thoughts. All of our prayers, Heavenly Father, we now make with one voice with our church family and family and friends and all brothers and sisters of the faith throughout the world on this special night. As we together with all of them pray these words that Jesus himself prayed and has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the Lenten litany, litany for Monday Thursday. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We hear you, Christ. Why are you so far away? Who has really caused the distance? Won't you listen to my groans? Come to my rescue. You are in control, O oh God. You rule over all. Our scripture for this day is taken from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Chapter 10, verses 16 to 25. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us, through the veil, that is, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not for forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. As we extinguish the final candle, the Christ candle, may we be humbled by what God has done for us through his Son, Jesus Christ. Until the great resurrection, we will be in darkness because of his death, but be in hope, for Christ's final victory will be here soon. <laughs> 